I mean the old state house. Old state house. Have I been calling this the wrong one? Alright, there, there, you, there you go. There you go, old state house. The old state house is a historic building in Boston, Massachusetts at the intersection of Washington and State Streets. Built in... 1713, it was the seat of the Massachusetts General Court until 1798, one of the landmarks on Boston's Freedom Trail. It is the oldest surviving public building in Boston and now serves as a history museum operated by the Bostonian Society. Uh, the Massachusetts Town House, the seat of colony government. Today's brick old state house was built in 1712-13, to possibly designed by Robert Twelves. The previous building, the wooden townhouse of 1657, had burned in the fire of 1711. A notable feature was a pair of seven-foot-tall wooden figures depicting a lion and unicorn, symbols of the British monarchy. Lion and unicorn, symbols of the British monarchy. So there's the lion and there's the unicorn, they're wooden. So they're not, you know, they're not bronze or, you know, gold or anything. They're made of wood. Let's see. Here we are. They don't look all that wooden up close. They look like they're metal. Maybe. Alright, so there's the lion. And there's the unicorn. How majestic. Um, the building housed a merchant's exchange on the f on the first floor and warehouses in the basement. On the second floor, the east side contained the council chamber of the royal governor, while the west end of the second floor contained chambers for the courts of Suffolk County and the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court. The central portion contained the chambers for the elected Massachusetts Assembly, this chamber is notable for including public galleries, the first known example of such a feature being included in a chamber for elected officials in the English-speaking world. The interior was rebuilt in 1748 after a fire in 1747. The brick walls of the 1712-13 building survived the fire. In 1761, James Otis argued against the writs of assistance in the Royal Council Chamber. Though he lost the case, Otis influenced public opinion in a way that contributed to the American Revolution. John Adams later wrote of that speech, then and there the child independence was born. Uh, on March the 5th, 1770, the Boston Massacre occurred in front of the building on Devonshire Street. Lieutenant Governor Thomas Hutchinson stood on the building's balcony to speak to the people, ordering the crowd to return to their homes. Um, okay. Boston Massacre with the Patriots bias, huh. Alright, so the Boston State House is back there. Uh, can we read this? Unhappy Boston, see thy... I can't read it. Deplore... They, thy hallowed walks be smirched with uh, I get something gore while faithful or faith faithless faithless person and his savage bands with murderous Rancor stretch something I can't read it like fierce barbarians grinning anyway so this is um completely biased and it talks about how everybody was shot by the redcoats actually only five people died all right well it, it's a it's a poem and it's um the bloody massacre all right so they kind of spun. The kid, like the, the shooting of five people into a massive disaster or something. Uh, on July 18, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was proclaimed from the east side balcony to jubilant crowds by col 
Colonel Thomas Crafts, one of the Sons of Liberty. At one o'clock, Colonel Crafts rose in the council chamber and read it to the members. Then fellow patriot Sheriff William Greenleaf attempted to read it from the balcony, but he could only muster a whisper. Ha <laughs> ha! Colonel Crafts then stood next to the sheriff and read it from the balcony in a stentorian tone. For most people, it was a festive occasion, as about two-thirds of Boston residents supported the revolution. The lion and the unicorn on top of the building were removed and burned in a bonfire in King Street. After the American Revolution, the building served as the seat of the Massachusetts state government before its move to the present Massachusetts State House. Wait a minute. This is a, a recent photo. Did they put the they put the lion and unicorn back? That is interesting. They put the two things back. <laughs> um, museum. Okay, so from 1881 to present, it was a museum. Oh, here we go. In 1881, in response to plans for the possible demolition of the building due to real estate potential, the Bostonian Society was formed to preserve and steward the old state house. In 1881 to 1882, restorations were conducted by George A. Clow. In 1882, replicas of the lion and unicorn statues were placed atop the east side of the building after the originals that had been burned in 1776. They put the statues back. For historic purposes. <laughs> That's funny. That is uh, interesting. Alright, so there's the building there. It was the old government building. And the site of the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence on the East Balcony. So, north is that way, east is this way, so it's here. So from this balcony, they read the Declaration of Independence. We didn't get that in the game though, did we? So here, here, reading. Nice. So, locations, Boston. Christ Church. This is known today as Old North Church because it's the oldest church in the north end of Boston, but up, a, up to 1776 it would have been known by, the, by its official name, Christ Church, after Jesus Christ. Uh, this is where on the night of Paul Revere's ride, two signal lanterns appeared to warn rebels on the opposite shore that the British regulars were on their way to seize weapons. The signal was Paul Revere's idea, but contrary to popular beliefs, the lamps weren't a signal sent to Revere. They were meant to warn lookouts on the opposite shore in case Revere was captured. This church was a natural choice for a signal flame. It was the highest steeple in Boston and easily seen from the other side of the river. Even better, the church was Anglican. The congregation was full of wealthy loyalists. Um. Alright, so that's... Who would suspect the church sexton, Robert Newman, a friend of Revere's, of sneaking into the church at night to send secret messages? Alright, well, maybe we can find it. The Old North Church, it's called now. Old North Church. In the city of Boston. At 193 Salem Street, in the north end of Boston is the location from which the famous one if by land, two if by sea signal is said to have been sent. This phrase is related to Paul Revere's Midnight Ride of April 18, 1775, which preceded the battles of Lexington and Concord during the American Revolution. The church is a mission of the Episcopal Diocese of Massachusetts. It is the oldest standing church building in Boston and is a national historic landmark. Inside is the, of, inside the church is a bust of George Washington, which the Marquis de Lafayette reportedly remarked was the best likeliness of him he had ever seen. Alright, we need to find 
this in the game. Uh, Old North Church was built in 1723 and was inspired by the works of Christopher Wren, the British architect who was responsible for the rebuilding for rebuilding London after the Great Fire. Timothy Cutler was the founding rector after serving as third rector of Yale College from 1719 to 1722. In April 1775, Paul Revere did, told three Boston Patriots to hang two lanterns in the steeple. These men were the church sexton Robert Newman and Captain John Pulling, the two of whom historian David Hackett Fisher suggested each carried one lantern, lantern to up to the steeple, as well as Thomas Bernard, who stood watch for British troops outside the church. The lanterns were displayed to send a warning to Charleston patriots across the Charles River about the movements of the British army. Revere and William Dawes will later we later delivered the same message to Lexington themselves. But this this lantern method was a fast way to inform the backup riders in Charleston about the movements of the British. These backup riders planned to deliver the warning message to Lexington and Concord in case Revere and Dawes were arrested on the way. The lanterns were hung for just under a minute to avoid catching the eyes of the British troops occupying Boston, but this was long enough for the message to be received in Charleston. The militia waiting across the river had been told to look for the signal lanterns and were prepared to act as soon as they saw them. The meaning of two lanterns were, has been memorized by countless American schoolchildren, one if by land, two if by sea. It's from Henry Wadsworth's Longfellow's poem, Paul Revere's Ride. One lantern was to notify Charleston that the British army would march over Boston Neck and the Great Bridge and two were to notify them that the troops were taking boats across the Charles River to land near Phillips Farm. After receiving the signal, the Charleston Patriots sent out a rider to Lexington, but this rider did not reach his destination and his identity has disappeared from history. He was the one who might have been captured by a British patrol. But the warning was delivered miles away to dozens of towns, first by Revere and Dawes on horses, then by other men on horses and men who rang church bells and town bells, beat drums, and shot off warning guns. The current status of the lanterns is not entirely clear. One is said to be in the hands of a private collector, another broken during a tour, and yet another is on display at the Concord Museum. That's three lanterns, not two. Um... All right, well, let's go over there and find the Old North Church. It looks like that, if we can find it. Tallest in Boston and visible from the other side of the river. So I guess we should be able to see it quite clearly. Oh, there it is. <laughs> well, that was easy. So there's the Old North Church, right, right here. Do we have a picture of it? We do. What is it? We don't actually have a good picture of it. There's a... There's one of the steeple. Which is... Which is an accurate recreation. I guess the rest of it is not... that remarkable. Let's walk around it and then climb to the top. There's a chimney? There's a chimney in, in the church? Is that a, is that usually a thing? Alright, let's go up. Hmm. That's odd. But accurate. Ah, oh, fascinating. Or is it? Now that, that lines up there, but in the game, it doesn't line up. Like the, 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 the ledge there and this ledge there doesn't line up. Hmm. Maybe the steeple's not tall enough? Because like here, it looks... Maybe it's just the perspective, I don't know. I don't know. Alright, let's, let's go up. If I can uh, get this to... Why? No, what the? What just happened? I just face planted. Hmm. 
Alright, so yeah, so the steeple is quite tall, and you can see how if we had two lanterns, like in those windows or something, then it would be visible across the... across the river. There. Alright, that's cool. Is that Charleston over there? I think it is. Great. Alright, so there's the Old North Church. Oops. Next, Boston Old North Meeting House. Don't confuse this place with the Old North Church. It's actually a completely different building, which is why it has a different name. This particular meeting house was for the second oldest congregation in Boston, which earned it the alternate name the Second Church. Uh, get a good look while you can. This wooden building will be torn down in 1776 and used as firewood. The church members would tell you it was because the British didn't like them much, and perhaps they have a point, because they still don't. The Reverend Mr. Lathrop was known for his pro-rebel sermons and tellingly, he and most of his congregation weren't in Boston in 1776. I wonder why. After the Old North Meeting House was torn down, Christ Church inherited the prestigious Old North title, becoming the Old North Church that most people know. Alright, so this, this church is not... does not exist in the real world apparently. It's torn down for firewood. Uh, can we see it? Is it that? I think it's that. Yeah, it's that one there. Alright, this is get over there. It looked brick in the game, but it was torn down for firewood in history. Old North Meeting House. Let's, let's see if we can find it in Wikipedia. There's a chance that it might not be. So this no, it's a brick building in the game. Oh wow, they just okay, they just took the Old North Church. It's the same chimney, look at that, it's the exact same chimney. They took the same building and copy and pasted it. Changed the steeple. And that's it. It's oh wow, it's copy and pasted. Um Old North Meeting House? No, Second Church Boston. Well, there's a... Hmm, it's curious. Actually, it looks very similar. <laughs> well, this here, here's the picture of it. New Brick Church, oh, Second Church, oh, it's, but it's a brick one. Wait a minute. First congregation of church, then beginning in blah blah blah, merge with, nope. Buildings. Through its long history, the second church had some eight church buildings successively, located in various parts of Boston. North Square, Hanover Street, Bedford Street. So the one that we should see is the North Square building, which is like this one. Uh, the other ones... Uh, that's the wrong, wrong page. The other ones... So that's not that one, that's not that one. Okay. So this apparently is what can be seen of it. Remarkably, it does actually look pretty much like... No, 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 that's not right. That's not right. It's similar, but not right. They copy and pasted it a little bit too much. Copy and pasted it a little bit too much. Are you doing that, Connor? Alright, well the, the building doesn't exist anymore. And the one in the game is, is not really that good neither, given that it's just a copy. Alright, let's, uh, let's not worry about that too much and move on. Locations. Boston. Old South Meeting House, not to be confused with the... Uh, with the old meeting house or the old state house. Wait a minute, did I? The 
the old state. Oh, wait a minute. Did I read that wrong again? We. Oh, I, I did. The old meeting house. We didn't look at the old meeting house. I went and looked at the old state house. But in the. Hold on, old state house. This building housed the Massachusetts government from 1713 to 1798. Before the revolution, they would have met the governor, his advisors, and the elected assembly. And by elected, I mean elected by the white male property owners, since they were the only people that had the right to vote. Okay, I, oh, well, I, just, I just messed that up again. We didn't actually look at the old meeting house, we just looked at the old state house. The assembly also had rather limited power. The governor had a veto over anything they decided, and on occasion dissolved the assembly when they didn't vote his way, unless a governor more a dictator. But that's how the British government is. Um, in 1767, a gallery was installed above the meeting floor here, so the general public could watch their legislat legislature at work. This was a, a very novel idea at the time. Of course, some of the representatives probably regretted the, the decision later. When crowds used the area to heckle those who voted pro-British, then again, perhaps that was the point all along. The government moved out of the building to a bigger space in 1798, so the old building was turned over to merchants, including a wine cellar and a wig maker, making it the colonial equivalent of a shopping mall, or the one that mainly dealt in wine and wigs. Uh, Alright, so that's the old state house, which we looked up in Wikipedia. We didn't actually look at old meeting house. But, but didn't the Boston massacre happen outside the old state house? Boston Massacre Yeah, it's the old state house. It's not the old meeting house. What's did did I make a mistake or did does or did the game make a mistake? Old State House Boston. Old Meeting House Which of course is not actually in in Wikipedia I feel like this is wrong I don't I don't even know I don't know what's going on here Have we ever found it? Where... Should I try looking for it? I don't know. Uh, is, is... What is that building? I don't even know if I want to try looking for it. Seems like somebody somewhere made a mistake. Because the Boston Massacre happened outside the old... State House. That's not what I'm looking for. Why are they attacking me? Why are they attacking me? I don't even know. I'm using cheats to make sure they don't attack me and they're still attacking me. How are these guys? Um... And somehow the guys in front of you know to attack you. Ah, uh, no that's not it. I don't know, I, I don't remember this other building. I hide here? No. Let me just get that circle yellow and then just hide. No, too late. And then just hide like there. Alright, so I, I don't know what that's about, to be honest. 
So let's go to Enemus database and just move on. Because <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll ever find it. Locations... Boston... Old South Meeting House? Okay, we haven't seen this. This building hosted some of the key events in the American Revolution, mostly by accident. It just happened to be one of the largest buildings in Boston, so when meetings at Finnewell Hall overflowed, everyone moved to the Old South Meeting House to continue. This meant the biggest, angriest, most rebellious crowds ended up here. After the Boston Massacre, the people met here to demand that the governor remove British troops from the city, which he did. Thousands showed up here for meetings leading up to the Boston Tea Party. On the night of the Tea Party itself, this was where Samuel Adams delivered the line, This meeting can do nothing more to save the country, giving the go-ahead to seize the boats and dump the tea. Uh, of course, during the British siege in 1776, this church met the same fate as the other rebel hotspots. It was ransacked. The pews and pulpit were torn out and used as firewood, and the interior was filled with dirt and used as a stable and riding school. A riding school on the interior of a church. There was even a bar on the second level. I guess the th troops thought that would really stick it to the Puritans. The only thing worse would have been a karaoke night. Um, okay, this old South Meeting House is a different building from the old Meeting House. Let's try and find it. Old South Meeting House. There is a page. Yep, here we go. Now here we go. Alright. Historic church building in the corner of Milk and Washington Streets in downtown crossing area of Boston, Massachusetts. Milk and... Hold on, let me see that again. Milk and Washington Streets. And Google just keeps reloading over and over again. Alright, somewhere around here is Washington Street. Get okay, there. Milk Street. Oh, here it is. It's actually really close to the old state house. Wow. Alright. So it should just be... There? Old South Meeting House? Or maybe it's that one? It's that one? Alright, let's wait until these guards stop looking for me and then we can go over there and have a look. Go away, go away, there you go. Alright, let's see if we can find the Old South Meeting House. Um, if I can figure out how to get there. Oh, this is it. Ah, uh, wait a minute. What is what is happening here? Oh wow! They put the old South Meeting House right next to the old State House in the game and they put the Boston Massacre here well I mean the Boston Massacre was here right here but the old meeting house is right here wow okay I, that's not correct they put it right there this is the strangest thing Alright, what does Wikipedia have to say about this? Old South Meeting House, here you go. Oh wait, no, 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 my bad. My bad, that's not it. The Old South Meeting House is a church. This is the... This is the Old Meeting House, this is the other one. I'm getting so confused, they're all named... So similarly. Okay, that, that's the old, old State House. That's the Old Meeting House which we don't have a Wikipedia entry for. Oh, my bad, my bad. Old South Meeting House is... it, it is there. It's back there. Alright, my bad. Again. Old... Old State House. 
old meeting house, old south meeting house. This is the old south meeting house here. This one, this one. See, look at look at this, look at this, look at this picture here. So they've copy and pasted the the main building again. I guess they're all pretty similar. Maybe they're all built by the same guy. So they are actually quite similar in real life. But even then, look at this. That there lines up with that there. That there lines up there, and that there lines up kind of with there. In the game, nothing lines up. I feel like what they've done is they've made the tower full size, but the main building is not full size. Because look, there's two windows there, whereas there's only one window there. Okay, I see how that works. They've made the, the tower full size, but the main building, they've shrunk down. That's why it ended up like that. The Old South Meeting House is a historic church building at the corner of Milk and Washington Streets in the downtown crossing area of Boston, Massachusetts. Built in 1729, it gained fame as the organizing point for the Boston Tea Party. On December 16, 1773, 5,000 colonists gathered at the Meeting House, the largest building in Boston at the time. So you can fit 5,000 people into it. Uh, the church with its 50 with its 56 meter steeple was completed in 1729. The congregation was gathered in 1669 when it broke off from the first church of Boston, a Congregationalist church founded by John Winthrop in 1630. The site was a gift of Mrs. Norton, widow of John Norton, pastor of the first church in Boston. The church's first pastor was Reverend Thomas Thatcher, a native of Salisbury, England. Thatcher was also a physician and is known for publishing the first medical tract in Massachusetts. After the Boston Massacre in 1770, yearly anniversary meetings were held at the church until 1775, featuring speakers such as John Hancock and Dr. Joseph Warren. In 1773, 5,000 people met in the meeting house to debate British taxation, and after the meeting, a group raided a nearby tea ship in what became known as the Boston Tea Party. In 1775, the British occupied the Meeting House due to its association with the revolutionary cause. The British gutted the building, filled it with dirt, and then used the interior to practice horse riding. They destroyed much of the interior and stole various items, including William Bradford's of Plymouth Plantation, a unique pilgrim manuscript hidden in Old South's tower. Well, that sucks. Uh, Old South Meeting House was almost destroyed in the Great Boston Fire of 1872, saved by the timely arrival of a fire engine from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. But the fire caused the city's residence, residential districts to shift towards the Back Bay, away from the church. The congregation then built a new church building, the New Old South Church. The New Old South Church. They literally name it that. Now, which remains at home to this day, once a year on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, the Old South Congregation returns to the Old South Meeting House for services in its ancestral home. So it looks like that, looks like that. Alright, well there we go. Yeah, the, the building, the main building is bigger in real life than it is in the game. I am so confused by all the buildings in Boston because they all are named the same thing. Uh, next is Paul Revere's house. Paul Revere lived in this house with his family from 1770 until about 1800 with some notable exceptions, such as when he had to lie low because he won the countryside of British March on Lexington and Concord. What with the shortage of firewood in 1776 and the Loyalist insistence on getting back at anyone who defied them in the past, you'd think this wooden house might have been torn down too, but it wasn't. This might be because Revere left his eldest son, also named Paul, in town to watch over the estate. In any event, the building is still around today. One of Revere's descendants bought it in 1905 and turned it into a museum. It's now the oldest building in Boston. In fact, it was already 90 years old when Revere bought it. Colonial architecture is apparently superior to that of your average but mansion. Yeah, that is quite remarkable for a wooden building to survive this long. In fact, I am 
quite astounded by the fact that this thing lasted several hundred years. I think it's up there somewhere? Let me just fast travel. I don't know if we can spot it amongst all the other wooden buildings, to be honest. Like all the, all the other wooden buildings. Um, maybe we'll find it. What does it look like in game again? The picture in the game is not very good, to be honest. This locations, Boston, Four of this house. Like that's a really bad picture of it. But we might find it in Wikipedia. I remember it being somewhere around here on the map, right? Ah, oh, except it's not really... Is it that one? They all look the same. All the buildings look the same. Um, Is it that building there? Is it one of these? <laughs> Everything looks the same. I can't really tell what I'm looking at. Well, that's a tavern, according to that sign. Let's go to... Here, because as I saw the label of it earlier, there, the Paul Revere house. It looks like that in real life. It looks like that in real life. Hmm. The Paul Revere house was the colonial home of American patriot Paul Revere during the time of the American Revolution. Yeah, okay. Original three-story house was built about 1680, making it the oldest house in downtown Boston. It occupied the former site of the Second Church of Boston's personage, Parsonage, home to Increase Mather and Cotton Mather, which was destroyed in the Great Fire of 1676. Its first owner was Robert Howard, a wealthy merchant. His L-shaped townhouse contained spacious rooms and would have been enhanced by exterior features such as a second, store, second floor overhang and casement windows. As is typical of early Massachusetts Bay timber construction, the main block of the three-story dwelling consisted of four structural bays demarcated by heavy framing posts and overhead beams. The larger ground floor room in this main block was dominated by its chimney bay and adjoining lobby entrance. Although some contemporary Boston houses had separate kitchen buildings, the two-story extension behind the Revere House was typical. As the Revere House was set quite close to neighbors, its double casement windows were installed in the rear elevation rather than the more common placement in a gable. Around the middle of the 18th century, the Paul Revere House went through two major renovations. First, the roof line facing the street was raised substantially to bring the house in line with the Georgian architectural style that had become prevalent at the time. The roof line was, was returned to its original pitch, albeit without a gable, by the restorers in 1907-08, which gave rise to a commonly held misconception that the attic had been removed. Second, a two-story lean-to was added in the L between the two 17th century portions of the house. This lean-to was removed by the restoration in 1907-08. Uh, so it's just the house, really. There's nothing really all that interesting about it, aside from the fact that it was you know, the home of a famous person. 
except that I can't find it. So in Google Maps, if you if it will stop reloading all the time. In Google Maps is there which in game corresponds to I mean I know what the what the house is shaped like. Is it this? I think it might be this. Because that's the shape of that house. Let me just go over there. Uh, did I actually put a no, I didn't. Let me set a marker there and see if that's actually the house. And as we do so, keep an eye open for houses that might be what we're looking for. I know it's this one. It is this one right there. Hey, we found it. Nice. So it should be an L-shaped house. Ah, there we go. It looks exactly like it does in the pictures. Awesome. There it is. It's just like that. Exactly like that. Okay, great. So the um, there's, there's the lean-to. Is that? That got removed, right, in the restoration. The front of it looks like that, the side of it looks like that. There's a chimney there, alright, so they just made it exactly as it is in real life. I do it strange there, is that accurate? I guess it is accurate. Uh, this brick wall appears to be on the wrong side. So the brick wall is there, and then it's the opening on the other side. Whereas here, the brick wall is kind of in the wrong place. But that's fine, it's a minor thing. They even included these little decorative bits. Like, see that just above my head. Uh, there. And then that other one up there. They included those as well, that's amazing. They must have actually went to the real house and like took pictures of it or something and recorded the whole thing in detail to recreate the the, the house in real life. Like even even stuff like this, how this how this window thing here is slightly broken and on an angle. The shutter. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good job. Good job. Alright, but uh, nothing too interesting about the house, aside from the fact that uh, somebody famous lived in it. Alright. Just climb all over the roof. There's the chimney there. Okay, next. Locations... Boston... Boston Neck? In the 18th century, the only land route into Boston was across a narrow strip of land called Boston Neck. One often talks about the heart of Africa, of course, or the bosom of Europe, how wonderful Boston gets a neck. What does that even mean? Fortifications were built across the neck to protect the city from a land attack. I suppose a bit like a heavy... Somebody shut this guy up. When the Siege of Boston began in 1775, Governor Gage ordered that the fortifications be expanded and strengthened. They became known as Gage's Lines. Starting in the 19th century, land was added to Boston Neck, widening it, widening it to make room for the city to grow and presumably to ease traffic on and off the island, since Boston is no longer in danger of attack from the countryside. Alright, so this is not that important, but we might as well walk over there and just look at it. Maybe it is if you if you live in Boston today because everything's been been um 
reclaimed and like there's no longer a bastard neck because there's been all sorts of reclamations wait a minute there's a fort so this is this is it like there's a narrow strip of land right connecting Boston to the mainland and there's a massive fort right on top of it Oh, I see. Well, there you go. So there's a fort there and a narrow strip of land. Yeah, so as I said, Boston like is, is like a natural fortress because it's surrounded by water. Although there's no coastal fortification, so I guess if you have ships, then you can just attack it by, by a ship. And that's fairly easy. Alright, well, nothing too remarkable there. Not recent entries. Locations, Boston... Uh, How many of... Okay, that's not too much more. Breed's Hill. Technically, the Battle of Bunker Hill could have been called the Battle of Breed's Hill. This is where the Continental Army built their main fortifications. And so most of the fighting happened here. Breed's Hill had only one thing to recommend it over Bunker Hill. It was closer to Boston, which made it easier to fire artillery at the city. Though, of course, one disadvantage of this situation was that it was a lot easier for Boston for, to fire back. Nobody knows why William Prescott chose the spot over Bunker Hill. It's possible that since he was working on fortifications in the dark, Prescott didn't realize how vulnerable the hill actually was until the sun rose, by which point it was t a little too late to up and move. Uh, I don't know if this is actually in Boston in game. I remember we had a mission there, but I think it's actually... It's actually somewhere else. Reed's Hill, Fort Liberated, Fort Liberated. Is that Reed's Hill? It's no. This is a fort. I. To remember, well, it can't be in here then if it's all right. Let's see if we can find this. Breeds Hill. There's a massive monument, the Bunker Hill Monument. Uh, Breeds Hill is a glacial drumlin located in the Charleston section of Boston, Massachusetts. Well, it's not actually in the city then. It is best known as the location where in 1775, early in the American Revolutionary War, most of the fighting in the Battle of Bunker Hill took place. Much of the hill is now occupied by residential construction, but the summit area is the location of the Bunker Hill Monument and other memorials commemorating the battle. Okay, so it's not actually in the city then, is it? Is it in the frontier? Like if I... Uh, that's the road to New York. If I... Is, is that it there, or... I don't actually know. Homestead... I don't think it's all that important, really. But I just want to find it if possible. It can't be one... No, it's not one of these. Never mind. Never mind. So it's, it's not actually in the Boston map. Location... Boston... Bunker Hill. This is the largest hill on the Charlestown Peninsula and the closest to the mainland. During the Battle of Bunker Hill, rebel reinforcements arrived on the Charlestown Peninsula headed to Bunker Hill, but it wasn't, I wasn't sure what to do once they got there. Rather than joining the battle, which was raging on Breed's Hill nearby, they wandered aimlessly around Bunker Hill, so disorganized they hadn't even bought a picnic. 
Israel Putnam was here attempting to direct troops, giving valuable instructions such as the famous don't fire until you see the white of their eyes, which he probably said several times to anyone who listened, and to be fair, it's a pretty great quote. That seems to be the only one of his directions that stuck. Many of his other orders were either misunderstood or deliberately disobeyed. Given the disorganized state of the Continental Army at the time, it was probably a little of both. Alright, let's go look for Bunker Hill. Uh, do you mean Thompson Square, Bunker Hill, Boston? Yeah, I guess so. So it's... Alright, so there's Charleston. Yeah, so it's across the river, Bunker Hill. So we're not going to find it in the game, as far as I'm aware. Or if it is, I don't remember where it is. Unless we can find it in the game. Let me go back to Boston and double check. Because Boston is there. No, we can't. Yeah, no, we can't go over the river. Never mind. Where did we go in the game? Did the game just teleport us to the mission or what? Or was it actually in the frontier map? I don't remember. Boston. I mean, it's in the Boston folder, it's not in the Frontier folder. Charlestown. Charlestown is the name of both the small town to the north of Boston and the peninsula it sits on. The peninsula was the site of the Battle of Bunker Hill, which was sometimes called the Battle of Charlestown, since the fighting did span across more than one hill. This was also where Paul Revere started his well known midnight ride, which I think sounds more like something you do with a lady. Alright, bro. As to the town of Charleston, well, while it was established prior to 1775, little of it survived the Battle of Bunker Hill. Continental Army snipers were stationed here to harass British troops, and the British set fire to the town to root them out. Most of the buildings were razed, and the, and the rest was burned during a raid in January 1776. The only part of the town to survive the war was the street layout. Charleston was rebuilt, however, is now part of Boston. Alright, so again, I don't think we can visit it in the game. Cops Hill Battery. Cops Hill is one of the tallest hills in Boston and the highest point in Boston's north end. The hill was fortified during the Siege of Boston, partly, due, partly to discourage rebels from building their own fortifications across the river on the Charleston Peninsula. The artillery on Cops Hill fired on the Continental Army during the Battle of Bunker Hill, sort of. It was actually a bit more distraction than destruction, at least at the Breed's Hill fortifications. The artillery fire on the town of Charleston was more effective. The resulting fires forced co out Continental Army snipers and leveled the town. So this we can probably find. Because it should be just... just to the uh, west of here? I think. There it is. Alright, so here's the battery. So Bunker Hill is on the opposite side of the river. Right? Can we... we can't swim across there, right? Alright, well here's the battery. Yeah, I don't remember how... how we got there in the game during the mission. Cajun, Boston... Cops Hill Battery. Should I look this up? Cops Hill... Battery? Battle of Bunker Hill. Yeah, no, it's not in... There's no... There's no article for the individual place, although... If you want to look up the article for the Battle of Bunker Hill... There's a map. Fascinating. Fascinating. Look at this. 
So Charlestown is there. Breed Hill. Bunker Hill. The English and and the rebels Coop's Hill Battery is there firing across the river interesting interesting but uh, not what we're going to do today because we're looking at architecture not battles but really, really fascinating. Look at that. Interesting. Alright. Fort Hill and South Battery. Fort Hill is the second highest hill in Boston, if only it had tried to harder... Uh, whatever. And overlooks Boston Harbor. Defenses were built here in the mid-17th century, along with a smaller one-gun fortification near the harbor named the South Battery. The South Battery was expanded in the 1740s, but had fallen out of use by the 1760s. Both it and Fort Hill were rebuilt by the Patriots during the Revolutionary War, but both were dismantled before the turn of the century. Fort Hill, the hill itself, not the fortification, was leveled in the late 1860s to make room for more land. So, alright. So the hill, the, the fort is gone, and so is the hill. The hill was used to um, reclaim land. Fort Hill. Fort Hill. <laughs> there's no, there's no Fort Hill in in Boston. Beacon Hill. So they they flattened the hills and then use them to fill in the water and there's no there's no Fort Hill anymore in Boston what if we just like Fort Hill Boston Fort Point I see I see how that works Fort Point All in today at the intersection of Oliver and High Streets. Um, Oliver and High Streets. Oliver. I four point The hill jutted into the Atlantic Ocean. Oh is it that one? It's ah Fort there it is, Fort Hill, there it is. Um and it's a star shaped fort. So it is in the game, I'm pretty sure. Although I don't know if it's the correct shape in the game. So we go there, there, here. This is Fort Hill. It does not exist in real life anymore. And it is a star shaped fort, kind of, in the game as well. Fascinating. Um. Also, not that remarkable. Does this tell us anything? Fort Hill was located near... Yeah, its height and proximity to the sea made the hill an advantageous point to put defensive cannons. And then it talks about the redevelopment and then the demolition of the whole mountain. So there's not much to be said about it, is there? Alright, well, let's carry on. Locations, Boston. Moulton's Hill, the lowest hill on the Charleston Peninsula, standing at 32 feet or about 10 meters high. 
sometimes referred to Molten Hill or Molten's Point. This is where General Howe's troops landed during the Battle of Bunker Hill. Boston's actually on the opposite side of the peninsula, but Howe took the longer route round to outflank the revolutionaries on their on their left side. That was the excuse for taking the long route. However, Howe made a mistake when he arrived. He saw Continental troops on Bunker Hill and assumed they were newly arrived reinforcements. They were mostly just confused and milling around like aimless youths. Um, Howe halted to wait for his own reinforcements, which gave the Continental Army time to shore up weak points in their defenses. This made the battle much longer and much more difficult than it might have been. It also means there was an advantage to the chaos in the Continental Army that day. They managed to confuse their enemies as well as themselves. Alright, so again, the hill is on the Charleston Peninsula, so it's on the other side of the river that we can't get to at the moment. Uh, Hancock Clark House? John Hancock's grandfather, the Reverend John Hancock, had this parsonage built in 1737. The Clark in the name is Reverend Jonas Clark, who lived here at the time of the revolution started. I have just called it Hancock House. Uh, who, who actually is amused by Sean? Uh, John Hancock, the famous politician, not his grandfather, and Samuel Adams were staying here as Clark's guests the night before the Battle of Battles of Lexington and Concord. William Dawes and Paul Revere arrived sometime after midnight with a warning that the regulars were on their way. Adams and Hancock moved to a safer location. Hancock seems under protest since he wanted to go down to the green and fight. Men who went down to the greens and fight at midnight are of course dedicated men of passion. Hancock Clark House. House is spelled Hancock. Clark, Clark House. There it is, and it's actually quite far away. It, this must be in the frontier. Yeah, this must be in the frontier, because this is not actually in on the Boston map. Um, notable as the only surviving house associated with the statesman John Hancock, who lived here for several years as a, as a child. I don't think there's too much for us to say about that. I mean, it's a very ordinary house, except it was lived in by a famous person. Church residence. This house was built in 1707 by a prominent local merchant named Robert Califf. Benjamin Church bought it from his heirs to use as a Boston residence. Church's practice is on Newbury Street, a fairly short walk away, so the house was in an ideal location. It's also in a nice part of town. Even in colonial Boston, two-story houses with fenced-in gardens didn't come cheap. And they didn't even get a cable. Uh, okay, church residence. This might actually be in Boston. Except... It's not in the uh, in Wikipedia. So it's actually... it's a Colonial Boston two-story house, which means it must be somewhere on the outskirts of the city, maybe out here? Let's see if we can spot it just by the way it looks. It might just be that one. There. It certainly looks like it. Is it that one? Is it that one? What does it look like? Boston... Church house... Church residence... No, it's not these. Unless it is. Let me try and memorize how that looks. I think it's this one. Unless it's, co unless it's copy and paste it. Um, I think it is this one. 
Yeah, I think it is. Alright, well, there you go. A rather unremarkable house. Except that, yeah, except that a famous person lived there. Alright, so that that's the architecture of colonial Boston, I guess. I mean... There's a few famous buildings, like, you know, the old state house, I guess. I wish they... I wish they talked more about the shipyards and the harbor and, and, and the markets and stuff like that, not just, you know, houses. But uh, it doesn't, so I guess that's it. Alright, so I learned a little bit about the history of Boston. That's interesting. The individual houses are not quite as interesting. But uh, there you go. Well, that ends uh, our Boston tour. I guess in the next video we do New York. I'll see you guys there.